Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to a special five-part podcast series, which I'm doing with Jay Rosen, entitled, May the Podcast Be With You on the Intersection of Star Wars and Compliance. Over the next five days, Jay and I are going to take a look at five Star Wars movies. Our sponsor is Affiliated Monitor. Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies, and even individuals. Having served in over 500 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance program, I would urge you to visit, visit Affiliated Monitors at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. I'm here with Jay Rosen today for a special one-week podcast series. May the podcast be with you on the intersection of Star Wars and Compliance. May the podcast be with you as a part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Today, we're going to take a look at a movie episode number six, Return of the Jedi. And we're going to consider it in the context of effective compliance training. Jay, you want to set the stage for us? Sure. So this is going back to part three of the original trilogy, and we're talking about movie six, Return of the Jedi from 1983. Luke and Leia head to Tatooine to save Han. She releases Han from his carbonite prison, but she is captured and enslaved. Using super Jedi powers, Luke infiltrates Jabba the Hutt's palace and gives him one last warning. He takes him, Lando, Chewie, and Han to a Sarlacc pit, intending to drop them in to be digested over many years. But our heroes turn the tables on him. While the others rendezvous with the Rebel Alliance, Luke returns to Dagobah, where he finds that Yoda is dying. Yoda confirms that Darth Vader, once known as Anakin Skywalker, is Luke's father, and that there is another. The spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi confirms that the other Skywalker is Luke's twin sister, Leia. Obi-Wan tells Luke that he must fight Vader again to defeat the Empire. The Rebel Alliance learns that the Empire has been constructing a new Death Star, Mission of the Emperor. On the cute Ewok-filled planet of Endor, Han and Leia try to stop the completion of the second Death Star by knocking out an energy field that is protecting the construction site. Vader brings Luke to the Death Star to meet the Emperor, who asks Luke to kill Vader to take his place. But Luke won't have anything to do with it. He's a Jedi, he says, just like my father. Unwilling to let his son die, Vader throws the Emperor down a reactor chute to his death. But in the process, Vader is mortally electrocuted. At his last request, Luke removes the redeemed Anakin's math before he dies in his arms. As the battle continues down on Endor, the strike team defects, defeats the Imperial forces and destroys the shield generator, allowing the rebel fleet to launch their assault on the Death Star. Luke escapes on a shuttle with Vader's body, and the Millennium Falcon flies out of the Death Star superstructure as the station explodes. On Endor, Leia reveals to Han that Luke is her brother and they kiss. Luke smiles as he sees the spirits of Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Anakin watching over them all. So, Jay, this was the uh, finale of the original trilogy, uh, tied up neatly, uh, at least so we thought, the um, uh, story of the Empire and the Rebellion. And I'd like to use this really as a jumping-off point to discuss effective compliance training, because I think at this point it was clear that Luke had completed his training, and indeed he was an effective Jedi. Uh, the the concept of effective training is not, uh, or is, I should say, relatively new, newly introduced to best practices compliance program uh, over the past couple of years. It, initially, it was brought up by Wei Chen in some of her public remarks 
when she was the compliance counsel in January 2017. The concept of effective compliance training was first brought up uh, in the general cable deferred prosecution agreement. I should say the first time we saw it at a DPA. And then in the February 2017 Department of Justice's evaluation of effective compliance programs document, it raised the following question under form, content, and effectiveness of training. Has the training been offered in the form and language appropriate for the intended audience? How has the company measured the effectiveness of training? Perhaps we should leave the language discussion for you to handle, but at a later date, and really focus on how you can determine effectiveness. There's uh, Most companies um, really have struggled with this uh, to determine uh, and to sh- demonstrate effectiveness. Of course, one way is if you don't have any FCPA violations, then your training must be effective, although I recognize that's sort of reverse engineering. So I have some uh, suggestions for you. <laughs> Uh, that uh, can help you formulate a test to determine the effectiveness of your training. Number one, figure out what you want to measure. So what actions do you want an employee to take? What, what actions do you want them to avoid? Number two, were the employees satisfied with the training and what was their engagement? The next step is to get a sense of whether the employees feel the training you provided is relevant and targeted for their job. Number three, did the employees actually learn anything? A critical part of any training is the assessment. You need to uh, test, assess, ask questions at the end to see if the employees actually learned what you were trying to communicate. Number four, are employees applying the training? Uh, This is where you need to conduct a survey to determine employee application and implementation of the training topics. To do so, you must conduct employee surveys to understand whether they've stopped engaging in certain risky behavior or at least are thinking about the FCPA and bribery and corruption, anti-bribery and corruption policies and procedures. And finally, what's the quantitative business act at aspect or impact rather of your training. At this point, you rather determine the numerical business impact uh, of your training, which uh, you can also utilize to help you determine effect or demonstrate effectiveness. So asking some uh, or all of these questions, I think, can uh, help you uh, determine your effectiveness because uh, re- remember, it's more than simply uh, determining effectiveness. It's being able to demonstrate that through document, 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 if the DOJ comes knocking. So, Jay, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, Tom, I, I think if we just kind of like look at Luke's training over this trilogy, um, initially he had skepticism about whether or not the force was real and this is something that he could utilize. And then he had to train on trusting his feelings and not tr- trusting empirical things. And then the final stage was Yoda. And then after he met with Yoda, Yoda convinced him to finally let go of his fear and embrace the force. So I think if you take those three steps and kind of put them up against the other steps that you enumerated, um, not only do you want to decide what did he want to do, right? So he wanted to be able to trust the force and use it. So when we talk about those um, attributes that you just put up to figure out what the result was, how we could measure it, and then what kind of business purpose. And I guess Luke's business was in the killing rebels business. So once he learned how to be effective and use the force, he could use his training and move forward. So this has been our exploration of Episode 6, The Return of the Jedi. And it's uh, part of our uh, part three of our five-part series of May the Podcast Be With You on the intersection of Star Wars and compliance. I hope you will join us tomorrow where we take a look at Episode 7, The Force Awakens, section of Star Wars and Compliance. If you have listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate us as it would help in our rankings. Also, if you have any questions, you can email me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. You can email Jay at jrosen at affiliatedmonitors.com. Please join us tomorrow where we take a look at Episode 7, The Force Awakens, and we bring in the compliance concept of disruptive innovation in compliance. Thank you for listening to May the Podcast Be With You, which is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network.